Um, we've totally not gotten into our love for craft beer, um, beer in general, especially craft beer, but we're about to dive into that weekly now. Um, guys, before we get started, we're live on Twitch right now. At what address, Mr. Peebs? Twitch.tv slash Dr. Peebs. There you go. Um, so what we're going to do, we got three unique beers right here, um, two of which are German, uh, one of which was made in California, I believe. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Um, so... Um, we want to bring three different <coughs> unique flavors weekly in, um, something new each week. Um, and, and, and while we do that, we're all three going to sample. We're all three going to give a little bit about it. Let's just dive right into it. Um, this is the Wine Stefan. Um, it's a German name. If I'm butchering it, I'm, I apologize. Wheezy Stephen. <laughs> this here is a Polliner. It's a Hefenweizen. Um, very good. We'll, we'll get into how good it is in a minute. And this here is Breaking Bud, as you can see. Storyline, I guess, behind obviously breaking bad very similar looking bottle there or can shall i say move it to americans to cash in on something for their beer <laughs> that's it brother <laughs> so i've never really thirded a beer up but we're about to try that bradley may get a little that's bit more little, than us pretty thick for a standard lager yeah i mean it's not bad it just looks you know wine stefan lager that's what we got here peas will be Ready to get this in his beard. That'll be a staple here on the show. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, you get whiff of it and everything. It's got a very sweet smell to it. It does. You can definitely t- smell yeast. I yeah, smell yeah. yeast. It's extremely sweet. Yeah, very sweet. Um, very smooth. Don't It don't have the burn that a lager or pilsner normally does. Like that spicy taste. Like say something... It's kind of cheap as Yingling is. It don't have that spiciness to it. it to me, it's got a, a, a hint of a dry, dry kick to it at the tail end. I'd say it's definitely drinkable. Definitely overall pretty good. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of overly sweet beers. I don't think this is overpoweringly sweet. It's definitely got a good. It's, it's really citrusy. That's the sweetness I'm getting from it. Yeah, it's got a good. This is just trying to see where it's 5.7, 5.1. So it's about your normal alcohol content. Yeah. This is something that tastes like something like if you're outside sitting around. Oh, yeah. Like a patio, like you're having a dinner party or something. I could definitely see that. Cook out, just sitting around drinking with your family and friends. Slow drink just to cool off, whereas you're not drinking to get drunk. You're drinking this no, to no. enjoy. Enjoy it. I, 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 did. Point, I mean, you're going to have to have the same amount of like a Budweiser or something like that to get. I think it's uh, definitely refreshing, though. That's one word that comes to mind. It's refreshing. A hint of dry, a little bit of sweet, a little bit of citrus. I don't know why it should be citrusy like that, but it is. It's got like a lemony type of citrus, not an overbearing, like say a, an orange IPA or you yeah. know, any kind of. Overall, I'd give it like a 6.5. Yeah, I'd probably go about a 6, 6. Six, six or seven. It's it's definitely one that you're going to want for specific outings. Yeah. It's not a, you know, everyday drinker. Nah, I wouldn't be something that I'd go buy, uh, you know, 12-pack of weekly for sure. Um, drinkable, yes. Uh, sitting around a campfire or or actually a hot summer day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Grilling out. It's very day. enjoyable doing something like that. This other one, uh, I've tried many times before. I'm going to tell you I like it. Uh, it's Polliner. I have not tried this. Never, never had that? Mm-hmm. If you've ever got, if you guys ever been to Helen, Georgia, this is their Bud Light. This is what everybody in Helen, Georgia, is a German town. It's a small town in uh, northeast mm-hmm. Georgia that is basically like a Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Smaller, but the whole town's German. I was trying to see where it's actually brewed in Germany. It's brewed in Munich. Which I like honey. I normally like honey wheats. They're another thing that you want outside on a hot day. If you're standing over the grill, you don't want a thick beer. You want no. something that's light, easy to take in. You don't want something a pencil would stand up in. <laughs> yeah. You don't Once want again, my normal Guinness. <laughs> yeah. Once again, uh, very low alcohol content. Uh, just your basic like 5.5. That's most honey wheats. Like I, there's one I, I drink almost exclusively if I go for a honey wheat. It's, um, Put out by Ghost Island. It's called One Twelve, and it's it's about like that. I like 
beer so I have a kick to them. What if they're good and refreshing? You and your, you know, 13% and your 14%. And yeah. Yeah. He wants to take the pain off the wall, in other words. Yeah. yeah. It's not my fault that... He wants to pay. He wants to pay twenty dollars for a four pack of beer. <laughs> well, four pack will get you wasted. Then, you know. <laughs> we don't condone uh, condone drinking and driving. By the way, just throwing that out. There. Uh, if you don't get wasted in your own house, though. If you want to get yeah. wasted with the guys that are reeling a beer while we're filming, we're all for it. Yeah, sit, sit around. We're live right now. We're live. Drink too. Whatever. Let's do it. If y'all want to be the one hundred subscriber too. Oh, I'm giving that a good, good smell. This is one of the smoothest, easy, easy drinking beers you'll ever drink. I like the smell. It's not, you know, hoppy or weedy or overly sweet smelling. That's actually a good, a good honey wheat. Right it's a, there. it's a good clean honey wheat. Oh man, it's got a little bit of the very, spice, a little bit of the ale spiciness yeah. to it. Very, very drinkable. Um, I had these in Helen, Georgia. I mean, it's very much. Uh, I could pound these. You know what I mean? Uh, I'd I have no could see myself getting in trouble with these because it's way too smooth. Yeah. It's like, oh, there we go. There is no oh. blow. Uh, I'm, t- I'm telling you, this is a very, very good beer. I um, mean, it's only a 5.5. And just because something's a 5.5, don't ever think it's not dangerous. That's the problem with low content, low ABV beers is you'll start drinking more of them because you're not feeling the effects yet and next thing you know then it's too late you're staring at the ceiling yeah <laughs> that's correct again this one's polliner um i love you it is i mean you can taste honey weed in it you oh, also yeah. Oh, yeah. smooth very smooth um to me it's kind of got a rich flavor um there is no aftertaste that's why it's no. dangerous i would have to rate this one like an eight five i'd definitely say about a about an 8.5. I'm going to go with around 8, 8.5, somewhere in there. I mean, this is like the, the previous one. This is your outside on a oh, hot yeah. summer day, oh, just sitting around. If you want something cool and refreshing, this is it. Yeah. It's not heavy. It's not anything. Like it, like we said, definitely could get in trouble just pounding. Yeah, yeah. But just to sit and sip on, this is a... It's a good clean beer. I just mowed the grass. I want to sit back and relax beer. And that, guys, God, would be the polymer. Yeah. Shout out to our local show that carries Christ. Thank you all somewhere around here, guys. Uh, I go to Oxford, Alabama. Those of you who may be watching us in other areas, there's a store down there. It's called Tyson's Fine Wines and Things. She has about 235 different crafts on the wall. 235 different craft beers. She don't even carry anything that's you know, uh, anything that's, I don't know what the word I'm looking for here. Domestic. Any but domestic. She, she, your standard domestic. Popular. Yeah, yeah. domestic is in yeah. Budweiser. Bud Light. Yeah, or popular imports. Right. Like, um, Guinness, Corona, the ones everybody knows. Heineken. Yeah. It, it, don't shit on Guinness, though. I love Guinness, but mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's your quintessential, anybody mentions a style Irish beer, it's the first thing they think about. But if you go to Ireland, they're like, ugh. Oh, actually, I've go. That's literally the biggest thing is who has the best pint of Guinness. The true Guinness. Bars. All right. So now our last beer is going to be an IPA, Breaking Bud, straight from the TV show ripoff here. Um, this is Knee Deep Brewing Company, company, so out of California. So this should be interesting. I've never had this one myself. This one is a 16 ouncer, so we're going to have to divide it up a little bit more. Then your standard coil, be about five each. Next, you gotta measure everything. <laughs> yeah, I can see. It. I can see how thick it is being an IPA. Oh, you, can see, you can see stuff floating in it too with an IPA. No, oh, yeah. This hops that didn't get completely ground up and whatever else was it blended with anything else? Uh, we can look and see. I know you always you always have some that are like blended with like. Blood oranges. Oh God! Blood orange IPAs are some of the best. Turban has a good one. The Walking Dead one. There you go, Peebs. Peebs gets the. Let's see. Let me get the smell test right here. Oh, you can smell the hops. <laughs> oh my lord! Man. 
Let's go to tropical fruits and Dude. some kind of pine. This is Let's like. Go. Let's put pine in beer, okay? If you have. Did you say pine? Like pine? Yeah. Pine tree? P I N E. Yeah. <laughs> God, dude, smell that. You smell the hops like this. That smells like an IPA to me. Yeah, it smells like a snake handler, like yeah, a double I, IPA. The problem is, like, I don't. The IPA world, before we get started, it's just because your beer is uh, super hoppy doesn't make it good. No. IPAs got to where they were just raising the ball on hops, raising the ball on hops. Make your beer taste good, like the last one. And then make sure we can say it's an IPA, and but they got to where they just strong. They can. Yeah. And this one right here, just from smelling it, before I take a sip, like it smells like they were in that competition <laughs> of hopsing it out. Let's find out. That's tasty. You don't taste the hops though that much. Mm, at the end, you do. Yeah, that's got to kick it down. But it's not that instant. We'll that, say something like snake handler. Yeah, that that, that, no, is, you, that is just throws yeah. it right in your face. This it's is more Italian. From the tail yeah. I believe, stop me if I'm wrong, this one is very similar to how it smells, though. You yeah. can oh, taste yeah. it. You can definitely taste the hops. It's not an overpowering taste at the end, though, like some of them where they just punch you in the face at the end. IPA scale, it's definitely drinkable, as opposed to the overhopped ones. It's got wheat in it, too. I can see the tropical fruit. Get, get, I can taste that. Get, get you a sniff and then drink, and, and they're very similar. Seriously. Yeah. It's got the thickness of an IPA, like the moment it hits your mouth, but it don't go down like a thick IPA. No. Like it goes down actually kind of like thin, almost watery, which is not a bad thing. It's not thing. a bad thing after all the IPA bar has been set. Yeah, yeah. Now, but the more I'm drinking of it, the more that aftertaste is lingering. And it then, is. Uh, it's kind of a turn off for me on IPAs. Well, that's one of the main reasons as far as... Uh, IPAs go in general that I don't <coughs> just go order IPAs off the bat because of what you're saying is that they're lingering aftertaste. Well, IPAs are an acquired taste. Like I know people who drink nothing else, and I know people that if they taste one the first time, one my touch. wife's one person she will never touch an IPA ever again after that first one just because of the hops and things. She is shaking her head because she's sitting right there watching. <laughs> she's us. going. That's it. Oh, and. Yep. I occasionally, me personally, get on a kick where I'll drink IPAs for a while, and then I'll get tired of it. I don't see how somebody that can be all they drink. No. It has to too be much, a, too much like, other stuff. Phase. Like yeah. But I mean, I respect it because it obviously is an IPA, but it's to me IPAs. I want them to have a little kick at the end because it's you know the designated sign of an IPA, but I don't want it to where like as you keep going. Five yeah. minutes later, you're tasting. Yeah, it. you're still lingering with that taste. As Brad's now, yeah, it's like, out it's like it's like laying in the roof of your mouth. Yeah, you know, in your cheeks. It's, Is that from too much hops, towels. or what do you think? It's that's just an, I, I honestly believe it's a hops thing. That's an IPA thing. Like unless you're drinking to get drunk, if you're just trying to sit and actually enjoy them, that taste stays in your mouth, and that usually comes from the more stronger IPAs. The the theory behind an IPA is. It's not to be pounded like at a college frat party. No. It's when you get off work on a Tuesday and you just want to go home and drink one or two and relax. Yeah, but I'd rather really have one of the other two that we had. I think I would too, for sure, out of these three. Um, I think this is a decent drinkable beer. I, I would Definitely I, as an IPA, I'd drink it up. I, I, I would give it as an overall beer, though, not just ranking it as an IPA. Yeah. I'd say a flat six. I think that's fair enough. I mean, I understand the theory about IPAs, like you want to drink them just to relax, but that's the problem with the whole IPA competition, your double IPAs, your triple IPAs. Well, you're pounding them if you drink one at times, or yeah, if you yeah, drink yeah. two. Like they're trying to, you know, make sure that, oh, I'm not gonna go keep running back to the store because they're gonna have you trashed on one six pack. <laughs> so I would say personally on an IPA scale, it's about a seven or eight on an everyday beer that I would drink, maybe a four or five. Like I can't. I'm probably gonna finish it just to finish it. You know, <laughs> just to not waste a two dollar beer. IPA, I would give it about what Brad did, probably about a seven five. And honestly, as you know, if I had to pick a beer, I would not pick this beer to drink. Uh, and I've had some IPAs. That I'd be like, damn, I would pick this beer to drink. <laughs> So I give it, you know, that low five. I mean, it's drinkable, but it's 
not spectacular. Um, no, not at all. But as an IPA, it, it doesn't try to like weigh out hops, everything. Yeah. It's not trying to change up the flavor, saying that we're this type of IPA or that type of IPA. It's a good, basic, average IPA. And let's say what it mean. Obviously, the art on the can lets you know that they're kind of tail ending this thing with Breaking they're, Bad. They're trying to get you in by saying, oh, well, it's like Terrapin. Terrapin has a blood orange IPA. This is literally called The Walking Dead. It has artwork from the comic book, and it's a very it's good really IPA. Good. And I think cross promotion sometimes like that is a very good thing. Yep. Well, well guys, uh, that's our first official beer tasting. Uh, I think that went pretty well. And guys, if you like what you see, please comment below. We want to hear what your favorite beers are. Maybe you have some beers you want us to try. Yeah. Also, hit subscribe on our channel. We're definitely looking for the 100th uh, person to subscribe to our channel. Um, you get to come in with us. You get to pick the topic. We're definitely going to do some of this right here. We'll probably get you drunk, just being honest. If you don't drink, that's fine. We'll drink apple juice with you, whatever it has to be. <laughs> but you get to pick the topic if you're the 100 person to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Guys, you got anything else? Thanks for tuning in. As always, I'm Brad. This is Peeves. This is Bo. Signing out. Too sweet. Whoop, whoop.